<laughs> right. Uh, in my profile as the researcher, it all started when I was doing my diploma in translation at the University of South Africa after obtaining my PhD at the University of Stellenbosch. You know, at the time when I was doing a translation, that is the area where I started to learn so many things particularly with regard to the relationship between translation and, and, and research in this way. That there's a saying that translation is the house in which we live. Why so? Because it cuts across each and every field of study. Legal, politics, science, sports, whatever. They are included, you know, in translation. You get to know and study more about those uh, areas. That is why I then developed a great love in translation, now looking at it from a research point of view, researching more about all these various field, fields. And again, to respond to the question why, as a linguist, why our language, our languages, African languages, seems to be dependent on English, particularly. Let me just isolate English. Translation, translating from English to Sesotho, you find that as a translator, you are bound to go word for word from, from English. That is one thing that I wanted to research further, that can we ever reach a stage where these languages are equivalent? Because there have been a theory of equivalence, the equivalence principle. Now I wanted to refute the claim that these languages can be equivalent. Because they are different. There is no way that they can be they, they can be uh, identical. Particularly when you, you put in, you factor in the cultural aspect into picture. That is why when I was still around here, I wrote, uh, uh, I conducted a research entitled The Birth of a New Paradigm, where I was looking at uh, Sesotho translation as a cultural phenomenon. You know, trying to show that Sesotho language is dependent. Even though you would translate from English, you must remember that it is a language in its own right. So it can communicate the same meaning in terms of the African Afrocentric uh, way, not dependent on English. Then I also discovered through research, of course, within translation itself, that uh, 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 Sesotho, Sesotho, what you refer to as, as a Sesotho target text, meaning a text that is derived from uh, the English, is the second origin. What you had in English as the original text that you translated from is as much independent and uh, original as English itself. That is why I wrote, I conducted the research again, where I wanted to challenge the idea that Sesotho is dependent on, on English, and then had Sesotho target text as the second origin. Then again, I challenged the claim that when you translate from English to Sesotho, you can again back translate from Sesotho to English. Then I discovered again that no, it cannot work that way. Translation is a one-way traffic. Simply because culture is involved. Remember, if you move it from English to Sesotho, now you factor in the Sesotho African spices. Huh? Into it. 
So you can't take it back to English. It will never be original again. It's without spices. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it lost those spices. But be that as may, let me let me end up there and talk about what motivated me to know that what I'm doing is in fact right in terms of the research. Many students have problems as far as research is concerned simply because they think that when you write a research, you just put in facts. You just write and then what do you think you put on paper? Of which research is not like that. You have to follow what is referred to as SOC. SOC, S-O-C-K. And S stands for significant, O stands for original, C stands for contribution, and K stands for knowledge. In other words, when you write a research, you must provide a significant, original contribution to the body of knowledge. If it is not like that, you haven't done anything. But then somebody challenged me the other day to say that, no, but how can you put in S O there? the significant aspect. Because as we say, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. In other words, what is significant to you may not be necessarily be significant to me. Then I said, no, within the confines of research, remember that research is conducted by its paradigms, yeah? the research design and what you call the golden thread. You have research questions, you have research objectives, okay, and you have the research aid. If you follow those in terms of what you're going to write about, then you know that at the end, this is going to be a significant contribution that you would have made to your public readers. And finally, there is again, the acronym that I want to give you, the FRIN. That trans uh, uh, research can never end. Yes. When you wake up in the morning, it starts. When you, when you sleep, it ends. In other words, we live in research. FRIN stands for F, FEDA, R, research, I, is, N, needed. Further research is needed. In other words, when you research, you must always think that it is necessary for you to research further. Yes. It's not the end. What you have uh, discovered there, never draw a line to say that this is generalized and it features to everybody. Yes. Further research is needed. So I end up saying that. <laughs>